Hello everybody, welcome back uh, to a new tutorial. Uh, I know it's been a while. Uh, please forgive me for not being able to upload any new tutorials lately. But uh, I came across this question uh, talking to one of our undergrad students and uh, I find it a little bit interesting because it explains some of the concepts uh, civil engineering students or even mechanical engineering students need to know. Anyways, let's jump into the example. As you can see, there is uh, this pole AB uh, being held by cable from point B and pinned down to point C. And there is an unknown force P applied at a distance from the bottom which is equal to 3.5 meters and uh, the question says that the 4 millimeter diameter cable BC uh, is made uh, of steel with E modulus of elasticity equals 200 gigapascals and knowing that the maximum stress in the cable must not exceed 190 megapascals so the maximum stress allowed in the cable is 190 megapascals and at the same time the elongation of the cable must not exceed 6 millimeters uh, we're trying to find the maximum load P or the maximum force P that can be applied uh, to this uh, pole alright so we have this pole uh, connected to the cable BC and we want the maximum stress in the cable when we apply the force P the maximum stress in the cable BC not to exceed 190 megapascal and the uh, elongation does not exceed 6 millimeters so how can we do this one alright uh, let's take a look at the solution so the force in the cable BC that's that's a natural thing to do is just to start uh, looking for the unknown forces alright so how can we calculate this force well here's the thing we know the maximum stress allowed and we know the maximum elongation allowed so we can use these two facts to uh, calculate two forces actually one is by knowing the maximum stress allowed and one by knowing the maximum elongation allowed so two ways to calculate the force in cable BC the first one using the uh, allowed stress so let's look at this equation we know that the stress equals the force over the cross-sectional area and that will lead to the force over the cross-sectional area since I have the dia uh, diameter of the cable so it's pi d squared over 4 that will give me the area of the cross-section of the cable now I want to solve for the force FBC it's basically the stress times the area I know the stress which is the maximum stress allowed which is 190 megapascals I know D uh, which is the diameter which is I believe 4 millimeter millimeters uh, so I can solve for a force this is the maximum force allowed if the stress is uh, to be reached equals 190 megapascals so solving this equation 190 times 10 to the 6 pascals and the area pi times 4 times 10 to the negative 3 meters squared over 4 that will give me 2.388 times 10 to the 3 newtons so that force again this force is uh, due to the cable reaching the maximum stress of 190 megapascal so what's the other way the other way is using the allowed elongation so delta equals the force times the length of the cable over the E which is the modulus of elasticity of the cable times the cross-sectional area okay now if I solve for the force it's going to be the elongation delta E A over L okay basically I plug everything in and uh, have to be careful about the units so we have the delta allowed which is 6 millimeters uh, in meters going to be 6 times 10 to the negative 3 200 times 10 to the 9th pascals which is E and again 
the uh, diameter is 4 times 10 to the negative 3 meters square multiplied by pi divided by 4 should give me the area and the length of the cable just using Pythagorean theorem we have 4 uh, under the square root of course 4 squared and 6 squared the 6 is just basically adding the 2.5 and the 3.5 and that will give me 2.091 times 10 to the 3 newtons. So I have these two forces. Which one should I consider? Which one sh uh, should be, you know, the one I'm looking for? Okay, so we have two values for FBC. Which one governs? Here's the thing. As we apply the load to the cable, we start from zero, okay, with no load, and the cable has no elongation, no stress, and gradually we apply the load. So we apply, we start from zero, loading until the maximum allowed, which can be the, uh, the maximum allowed due to the elongation, or the maximum allowed due to the st uh, stress allowed. That means simply we will reach the lower value of B, F, B, C first. So comparing to the two values, going from zero, going all the way up, I will reach the lower value of B, C. Basically that says, comparing the two values, I will pick the smallest. Therefore the lower value governs and F, B, C should be 2.091 times 10 to the 3 newtons. Now, we have this structure in front of us. We'll try to solve for P, but in, in terms of FBC, okay? This way we can establish a relationship between the two forces. And uh, in order for us to solve for P in terms of FBC, we will take moments about point A, which is the hinge at the bottom. Okay? And we, before doing so, we need all the forces to be either on the x-axis or the y-axis, so it's going to be easier to multiply the force times the perpendicular distance to the uh, hinge. What I'm basically saying that we need to resolve FBC to its component. Okay, two components, two perpendicular components. Uh, the first component, the horizontal component, is 4 over L, L being the length of the cable, times FBC and uh, the vertical component is 6 over L times the force FPC and guys if somebody's still a little bit vague about this concept you can uh, check out some of the videos I've done before about uh, going back to basics in terms of resolving forces okay assuming that you guys are following along now we need the uh, length of the cable as well because we need to plug it in in uh, the equation, for example, 4 over L, what is L? L is basically the square root, again from Pythagorean theorem, the, the square root of 4 squared plus 6 squared, and that should equal to 7.21 meters. The next step now is to take the summation of the moments about point A, and count, assuming that counterclockwise direction of uh, the moment should be positive. So let's start. We have P multiplied by 3.5 and that's going along the positive assumption which is counterclockwise n minus because the force 4 over L FBC will cause a clockwise moment about point A so that's the minus uh, sign 4. So it's 4 over L which is 7.21 times FBC multiplied by the distance 6 which is the total length of or the total height of the pole and that should equal to 0 and you can notice that we only use the 4 over L FBC uh, component because the 6 over L FBC component or the force uh, 6 over L FBC has a line of action that goes through the point of rotation which basically uh, the distance to be rotated about in this case zero that's why it doesn't create any moments about point A now if I solve for P using this equation I will get 0.9509 FBC okay so P is this percentage of 
FBC. Now all we need to do is just use the value of FBC we obtained previously to obtain a maximum value of P. So FBC is 2.091 times 10 to the 3 newtons. I plug it into the equation. I'll have 0 0.9509 times 2.091 times 10 to the 3 newtons. That will give me 1.8 1.988 times 10 to the th 10 to the 3 newtons or simply 1.988 kilonewtons so the maximum load p that can be applied is 1.988 kilonewtons all right i i hope that uh, tutorial was clear and uh, thank you for watching i'll see you in the uh, future tutorials